internet issues here. So we're here. We're here. Uh, one of our one of our um, services like pooped out that I was on. So, anyways, how are you guys today? It is November eighteenth, Wednesday. Um, I <laughs> somebody put on my Facebook live. Where were you today? That was yesterday. I said, well, I'll see you tomorrow. And she goes, oh, my days are getting all mixed up. I know none of you can relate to that. Zip, nada, none. <laughs> so you guys have sent me some questions that I am more than happy to answer and go through before we look at more faces. Uh, I do want to say that I didn't explain how to fuse on Monday. Minor detail, minor detail. So when you use a fusible, use uh, use the manufacturer's instructions. They're all different. I know for Apple Web Plus, you want to be on a medium heat and you wanna put down your, no steam, put down your iron, one, two, three, one, two, three, and you kind of do a little dance. Hi, Holly. And you might want to put um, parchment paper on it uh, so that your iron doesn't get gummed up or a uh, pressing sheet, the quilter pressing sheet, Teflon. But for that, then you have to hold it a little bit longer. Now, I found when I pressed mine, um, there were places where it didn't stick, like perhaps I got to get the fusy stuff on it. So then I just went in and used some of this fabric glue stick and put it down. Uh, I just got ambitious in my cutting and things like that. So just do what the manufacturer suggests. Once I get it pressed down, then I turn it over and I do the other side, the back side of it. So it gets a double whammy, okay? And then remember, you don't do, it. well, of course it's, you're fusing it on the fabric now, but um, whenever you're playing with fusies, don't touch anything while it's warm. Let it cool, okay? Uh-oh, I'm gonna need a Kleenex. This is not good. And I don't see a Kleenex. Um, hmm. Let's hope it doesn't get ugly. <laughs> so, um, I got a question on how to tie off when I'm on my machine. I showed it on Monday. John, I would love a Kleenex. This could be seriously ugly. And she didn't catch how to do it. So I'm gonna show that in a moment. Well, actually I'll show you right now. And this is a pretty cool tip, okay? Put this over here. I Let me get the, um, I know I can take care of business when you're not on me. <laughs> so there we go. Okay, I think it's pretty well focused in, yes. So in this case, I'm going, oh, the camera's right in the way. This is not, okay, hold on a second, guys. I got to figure this out. Let me roll this up. Okay. Oh, let me just go over here. So what I'll do is, and actually I should have my camera on my machine. So excuse me while I do this. All right. Again, I'm working on a Bernina, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to do an infomercial for them or anything, but it's just how I do it. Now, when I'm straight line quilting, I'm gonna wanna be on um, my regular stitch, but then to finish it off and on, I go over, oh, here goes, <laughs> I go, thank you, honey. I go, oh, <laughs> toilet paper, we're desperate, okay. I go over to my zigzag, Oh, I've already done it, so let me clear it and start over. I go over to my zigzag, and I skinny it up, all right? And then I, you can see it's zero width, and then I, oh, I shorten it up to 0.05. And then I toggle in between these two. I start with this, and then I stitch with this, and then I end with this. So let me now move the camera again. And I will see if I can do it in this limited space we have going on here. Hopefully I don't sew over a cord. It's a three ring circus people, just trust me on that. Okay, there we go. Focus it in. So 
I'm just gonna go down this green line for fun. All right. And I tried to, I actually, um, let me turn this off, tried to get it so you can't see. Let me go see if I turn off my light, if that makes it better. Yes, not for me, but for you. Okay, so I'm going to go and I'm going to pull up the thread from the bottom and I'm on that zigzag stitch that has been defaulted. So I'm going to go down like this. This is a long arming trick. I'm going to come up. I'm going to pull up the bobbin thread. And whenever I'm around the needle this close, I move my foot from the presser foot or the um, gas pedal. Okay, I've pulled it up. And now I'm going to take a couple little stitches. See how it's not going anywhere. Then I'm going to go back over to the straight stitch. And I'm using a walking foot, but I have found that even with a walking foot, my straight lines can get bunky. So I'm using the QS um, ruler foot just right up against my walking foot. On the back, there's an area that sticks out. And then it's kind of just like a seat belt. Okay, so now, let me get in more. I'm going to go back to my little zigzag that I have defaulted to zero wide, 0.05 long. Okay, take some stitches, I'm locking them up. I'm going to grab this top thread, this thread here. I'm gonna come down into the same hole and then I'm going to pull up the bobbin, which you can't see because it's white. But there it is. And then you can I guess, I guess then I might take a couple little stitches, either before or after, I don't care. And then when you're done, I'm gonna cut my thread, but when you're done, you can just take your little snips and go like this, all right? I recommend getting um, snips that have a, a bend to it because I'll tell you what, it happens when people bring their scissors and they go down like that. Yes, holes can be cut in. So that is um, never fun for anybody. Then I got a question about flanges and how to put a flange in. And what a flange is, is or it's a one inch wide strip, okay, that now I've ironed. And this is just a little sample. In fact, I'm gonna show a cool way to face it on Friday. I'm going to just sew the flange down less than a quarter of an inch. Now look what's happening here, guys. My tips are getting cut off. So be very careful when you use flanges. And I believe um, it was, um, I forget who asked this question. When you've got points at the end, you've got an issue. I would do a big stitch, I'd baste it on my machine so that if I, when I sew my binding on on top of it, if I see where it's tacked down, I can just easily remove it. But that's that's as simple as it gets with a flange, okay? And then um, Marg wanted to know how to use the rotary cutter. She just bought like some pack or something. So here's the rotary cutter, all right? This is, this is the seat belt right there that locks the blade, okay? Actually, I'm gonna try and open it on here. So what you do is, no, that's not gonna work. Maybe I have to go back to this thing again. All right. Uh, I really like this uh, rotary cutter because it is so weighted. Um, it does the pushing for you. You don't have to push. So here it is. I push this in and while it's pushed in, I just open tap down. And then I can cut till my heart's content, all right? And then to close it, I turn it over and go like that. So stay away from this thing. You just ignore that whole thing. Just press in, tap down, cut, 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 cut. And you don't have to crank your hand like this, like we do. So keep it parallel to the surface. Keep it parallel, close it. 
And then the blade change while we're here is super easy. This mechanism here on the back side, I pull down, okay? I get a new blade, dispose of this properly, please. Actually, I often put it back in the packaging and just write old on it. And then because this is a magnet, well, let's look at this. There's like, oh shoot, let me see. You can see right here how there's one side that's flat in that circle. There's also one side in this, in this that's flat, okay? And so you just put the blade onto this, it's a magnet, that's it. And then you just put it in place, lining up the two flat sides and then closing it, okay? That's how you do it. This is if you wanna open the blade really big and you don't want to do that unless you're cutting batting or something like that. And how you do that, and this scares me to death, you guys. I press in and then I slide this back mechanism and it goes like that. Don't do that unless you have a real reason to be doing that because that is very, very dangerous. Thus, press, tap, cut, close, okay? So let's see, what else, what else, what else, what else? Oh, I wanna show you what I worked on yesterday. I um I think I, I like you guys, you know, we go through our ups and downs. I better not do that with this whole COVID lockdown thing. And um I had the opportunity to get a private lesson with Cindy Needham. And she's practicing what she's gonna be teaching on the show. We're gonna be taping in January. And if you haven't watched her shows, you just need to go watch. I believe we've done two with her. But um we're gonna do what we call little girls. And I did this yesterday. This, These are linens that are from my son-in-law's grandma's house. And it was so much fun. So I can't wait till we tape. She practiced the show on me and I guess she practiced right because look what I got out of it. Yay. All right. So we are gonna talk now about finishing these quilts, all right? And, uh, well, we'll do binding and stuff on Friday. But as I mentioned, I'm going to unplug this, and I hope this just isn't too... Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me take it off the wall. Okay. Um, no, let me leave it on the wall so we can see them side by side. Okay. So this was the first one. And let me make sure you can see this. Wait, everything's backwards. That's the problem here. Um, I went around everything in blanket stitch, just the top before I quilted it, and then I quilted it. And how I quilted it was an overall meandering, uh, like, bubbles or little feathers and stuff just all over and then in the parts like the leaves I would not want to leave this untacked down because um you kind of want equal amount of quilting over the surface so I went in the leaves okay I don't know why I didn't do the heart and then the face I just kind of did a little cheek and accentuated it and all of that all right and I did it in matching colors now down here the one I did in Jamie Fingal's class I thought, well, what the heck? Let me sit down and get this down. What the heck? I'm just going to go with... I am not doing well. Okay, hold on. Now I've screwed that up. Let me look at... You're looking at... Ah! You're looking at um, comments that I'm supposed to be approving. Sorry, guys. There we go. So in Jamie Fingal's class, I thought, well, having just visited Freddie, I'm just going to do black everywhere. And it looked horrible. It looked I did just meandering on Adair's face. No, I got it right here. And then I got, um, thanks, though. I got black in there, but I'm going to, then here's blue, here's this. But what I'm going to do with this is what I learned on Freddie's quilt. 
And that is Jean. What she does is she goes around. Let's look at her face. She does all the straight line quilting first. And then she goes in and she does this black. And she does several times on it. And then that really, besides the quilting that's gone through all of it, that really snags it down, okay? Oh, and I realize we haven't even looked at faces yet. That's going to be our, our dessert. I got into it. So on mine, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do more. And um, my hair got a little avant-garde. I didn't worry about it so much. But if you're new to free motion quilting, this is a really, really fun way to practice. And if you screw up a little bit, that's not a screw up. It's detail, all right? But I am going to go back and do more and highlight more. I thought I had enough, but I didn't. So that's how uh, you do it, okay, guys? And um, on Friday, I'm going to show you a funky way to face your quilt. And uh, I have a formal way that I do it, like when I'm teaching guilds now online, that you do a built-in sleeve and stuff. But on this, on these, no, that's just fast and dirty, and there you go. And it's how to face it, but also you could bind it. That's a choice, too. And I haven't decided yet on my latest one if I'm going to bind or face. But we all know how to bind, so I'll show you that when it's, um, when it's facing time on Friday. Okay, so let's start going through um, some of the quilts. Did it backwards, see? Keep you on your toes. Okay, Helen, I, I just love you for having done this. I just love this. She went into e-quilter and then did all of the face, not all, but many, hey, there's a guy, hi, um, did all of this. I just, I, I, I'm so thrilled. And if you're not taking advantage of the forum to see what's there, you are really missing out, okay? Okay, this is Debbie's. <laughs> Your hair cracks me up. And then that bird, I'm wondering if you got that out of a fabric or if you built it. I don't know. But um, I just think this is spectacular. And I like, actually, I, I suggested to go with a planar background, but that was just to get you started. I love your background. You know, once you... Once you get it, it's just, there's so many wonderful things you could do. Okay, this one is Lindy's. Um, have, I don't, and there's a story here. Um, I have a few more tweaks and all right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close up. <laughs> this has been fun. So I the, the piece of fabric gets getting me in here are the ladies in their bathing suits on the right hand side. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, goodness. This is Tony's. Uh, obviously, Tony is a dog lover. And I, looking at it, you know, I look at it and then I go to the next one. Next one and I noticed that she had doggy prints for her pupils. And, and then look for her hair. It says like fetch and all that good stuff. Super fun. And I can see that you used some of your cave for the background. Love it. Okay, this one just cracks me up. This is Kiki, and um, the cat is, of course, what struck me. But this certainly tells who you are, what you love to do. I just, these are so joyful, completely joyful. Okay, I just did Kiki. Okay, um, shoot, I didn't get your story in on this, but it's all these fabrics are dear to stuff to her. And I got to tell you that crab fabric is something else. <laughs> Completely something else. Fun, fun, fun. She, they do the Kentucky Derby and all of that. Um, let's see. Trudy. Oh, I looked at this and those eyes. Wow. And then I realized I think that's a cat. I think you've made your face a cat. If not, you made your face a cat. <laughs> and and I want to drink whatever you're drinking, okay? Send it over, please, ASAP. Tiger Annie. Oh, okay, I remember what you said, Tiger. This was really tough for her. Uh, she's more analytical. And so she made like a little tree with... Um, 
little notes on it that tells about her family and all that. And I can't remember if you said you had a hard time with the hair. That hair is rock star. It's fabulous. So I know a lot of you, and this is going to seem mean, but I know a lot of you, this was a big deal to do this. And I say, congratulations. Yay. If you're not uncomfortable doing it, um, you're not, I mean, if you're not uncomfortable doing things quilting, you're not trying hard enough. All right. So this is Susan. Susan, the thing that struck me first on this was your ponytail. I, that is just fabulous. And then, um, as I started looking at it, look at, look at her inner border. You guys, it says happy, 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 happy. I'm just amazed amazed at the fabrics <laughs> collectively that we have along with the footprints in the sand. I think, I think Susan likes the beach if I were a betting woman. Okay. And then this is to, to, to ha, to ja from down under, um, this, oh, you were the one that made me think this, you are out of your comfort zone. Good. That makes me happy. I like your, um, your eye makeup. That's really cute. And it says the end. I hope this isn't the end for you because you did a marvelous job. I mean, this is just so much fun. I'm laughing because I'm, you know, doing the Cindy Needham thing. And then if this isn't the direct opposite of what's going on behind me, I, I, I haven't a clue. Okay. This is Quilty Grandma. And um, I wish it was a little bit lighter because I can't really see it. But I'll tell you what, Quilty Grandma, I love your eyebrows that are above your glasses. <laughs> They're awesome. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. And the polka dotty, love it. Okay, Barbara. Okay, Barbara, I just went, yes, the hair, hair on this. I know a lot of you uh, collect the salvage ends, and I think that's fabulous for your hair. Yay. Okay, and then Hobby Cat. Hobby Cat. Um, let me see any better. Any stuff it's for hair, things that request that are in her life are cats, homes, antiquing, quilting, shoes, waterfront, home, four states where we've lived, a lot of driving, gardens, shop till you drop. Which, no, we don't know anything about that. You need to see counseling for that. <laughs> I never th thought I could um, achieve anything that looked like a face. I guess I was wrong. See, I think when Freddie said, if you just try and keep it whimsical, um, and actually that one too, Hobby Cat, was pretty darn representational, although I don't know you. Uh, oh, I'm wondering if you're the one too. Oh yeah, okay, let me move the logo. I can't move the logo up there. She has now made this her avatar. So when it's complete, I want you guys to put it up as your avatar just for fun. So we look like we're cool people we're hanging out with. Okay. Triangles. Okay. The difference between with the quality quilt that we're going to be doing, the difference between, let me grab triangles on a roll. And these things are that one is on a roll and these are flat. And um, in the olden days, we did it a really different way. So this, you're not maneuvering or wrestling, wrestling on a roll. But if you have it on a roll and they finish at one and a quarter, they have to finish at one and a quarter, you're good to go. I mean, honestly, when I was preparing for the class, I was all set to get triangles on a roll. I didn't even know these things existed, okay? And um, then as I started talking to people, they are like, yeah, no, this is the way to go. Again, there's nothing wrong with triangles on a roll. Uh, the other thing you're going to want to do, um, even though we're going to do binding and all that on Friday, if you're going to do uh, the Christmas quilt, the red one, I would start pulling out your red fabrics, keep it scrappy. I would also wash those red fabrics because reds can be very naughty, especially up against this white fabric. So I would wash it, throw in a shout color catcher, 
throw in um, some Senthropol if you have it, but take those reds to the cleaners. And you can see here that there are a lot of different colors here, a lot of different reds. The scrappier, the better. I have a, uh, let me look at the Hanukkah one. I have a friend, Carolee Hensley, who has, look at that, oh, who has, look at the different values, and I'll get back to Carolee. Look at all the different, oh gosh. Okay, so Carolee did a red quilt once, and reds come in different shades of red. You know that. You've got your orange reds, you've got your burgundy reds, you've got your blood reds, and she put them all in. And that was way back in the day, and that was a lesson to me. You can put them all in. Just please wash them. And other than like the cave, when we did the cave quilt, we had the hand dyes wash them okay just to get out the excess all right and the color catcher will tell you how much trouble you're in if you're a quilter and you don't have Senthropol, you should have it and you should also have shout color catchers it should just be in your laundry room or garage or wherever your machine is and you should have it there uh, i even when i'm washing like um my denim, I'll throw in a color catcher and it comes out blue, you know, so there you go. Okay. I want to move that. Um, your triangle paper sounds great in small flat sheets. Also, I don't have any paper that would make half square triangles so small. Okay. Love the manageability of mine. These are not mine. I wish they had my name on it, but I do own them. <laughs> so bottom one. Okay. Um, color of thread for straight line if you're looking at your face i think i i don't know what i did i think i just did kind of an off white uh, off white maybe a gray or something like that i learned from my quilter diane schweikert is just take a couple threads and lay them out on it i I don't want to see the straight line quilting. I want it just to be there. Although on Freddie's here, um, her face uh, was metallic, <laughs> super cool. And you know, metallic isn't for wimps when you're machine quilting with it, but super cool. Okay, printing out the holiday patterns. Templates keep coming out larger. Okay, um, thank you for saying that. You want to, when you print out your pattern, there's a square and you want to make sure it measures one inch. That's very important. I can't help you on how to have your printer adjust, but I would take whatever kind it is and go Google it and it will tell you how to get the ratio right. Oh my gosh, I am so glad you said this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I, I am, I am a printer dum dum. So, but you're gonna want it to come out right, okay? So, well, let's go look at it. Actually, does it really matter? Does it really matter? Let's do something fun. Let's go look at it, okay? I'm gonna go to my screen, and then I'm gonna go to up here. And then I'm going to go to Quilter Select. That's where it is. Because if it's just the applique, who cares? Okay, hold on. Let's go to Resources, Projects. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. That's a, that's a, uh, <laughs> smart. Okay. So, okay. That's my singing. Okay, all of this is done by measurements. Measurements, measurements, measurements. Uh, quilt assembly. If you stick with your measurements, you know what? Doesn't matter, because all the only thing we're really tracing here would be the holly leaf. And this, um, you know, if it's like, if it's like way off, you might want to scale it back or something, but we know the circles are one and a quarter and then the holly leaf is that, you know what? Um, I think 
we're going to be fine because we are cutting everything. We're working with it. We're going to follow the pattern. And then it's just when we get down to the applique. But that said, I'm glad you said that. Um, let's say you're doing foundation paper piecing or something like that. You do need to get it right. Okay, but we're not doing that. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. And I don't know what Jacqueline is saying here. Um, maybe the cat walked across her keyboard. <laughs> oh, I love, by the way, on my Facebook Live, I put my cat, the Queen of Sheba, on my uh, bed. And then you guys started sending pictures of your Queens of Shebas, both, both uh, feline and canine. How far apart for straight quilting lines? I, on mine, did about, oh... But about a third. third of an inch. About a third of an inch. Let me see what. Okay, over here, she did like really, really tight quilting. I let's put it this way: you don't want it too big. That could screw it up faster than anything, you know. So, okay, I think I'm looking at questions. Okay, I think we're good. How far? Oh, wow. For printing, she needs to have the size actual versus fit to page. Oh, Susan, thank you. I don't even know where you find that on your computer. Does Freddie always quilt through her faces? Yes, but she doesn't do it. Uh, Jean Stempy does it because Freddie, um, um, with age, okay, she's lost the ability to fuse and all that kind of stuff. So, um she just cuts out pieces, glues them down with a glue stick, and sends them off to Jean. Okay. Oh, I didn't realize I could scroll back here. How do we add to our avatar to the forum picture? I do not. I think you... Hey, John. John. I know we're in a little bit of a delay. Okay. You're, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot here. How do you put your picture, change it to your avatar on our page? Um, I'll put something up on Facebook. You'll put something up? I mean, don't you go into your profile and put it in there? Yeah. That's okay. Done yeah, John hasn't words. done it, but you go to your profile and then... It's your profile picture. It's your profile picture. That's what you're doing. You're putting up a profile picture. So I think it will probably lead you through it pretty clearly. So go to your profile, okay? All right, you guys, have a great day, and we will see you on... Oh, by the way, um, Dee will again be working this Saturday for you. I think she did a smash-up, bang-up job. She is just so calming and so delightful. And we're... Um, edit. Okay, edit your profile photo. Thank Barbara. Go to edit your profile photo in your profile, and then you can do it. And I, I guess I have to do mine too. <laughs> so, okay, guys, uh, you go straight to your profile to change it. Yeah, it's not hard. All right, kiddos. Bye-bye. <laughs>